Coming up on Ag Week TV, the effects of drought are still being seen at cattle sale barns around the region. We'll take a quick look at the close of the sugar beet harvest in the southern Red River Valley. I'm Michelle Rook. We'll have a harvest update from here in South Dakota. And the Montana Brewery Trail continues to grow, taking advantage of the state's big barley crops. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. The drought that plagued much of the region this summer continues to ease, although parts of North and South Dakota still range from abnormally dry to severe on the drought monitor. Conditions have improved considerably since July. But as Jenny Schlecht found, the effects of the drought are still being seen at the sale barns. Even though drought conditions have eased in the Western Dakotas, cattle producers are still feeling its effects. Sale barns are seeing big runs of cattle coming in far earlier than usual. We're selling a lot more cattle than we normally would this time of year. This is our heavy marketing season, of course, and we've gone to two days a week, which we normally do, but we sold a lot more cattle throughout the summer. We started selling pears in June and then started selling calves in late July and through uh, August, September. In addition to starting earlier, they're selling many more cattle than normal. Schnell says each sale day brings as many as a thousand more head than usual. The story is much the same at other sale barns around the region. Things started about a week earlier than normal. We knew that it would come, be coming early. We thought maybe two to three weeks early, but that late fall moisture, you know, helped everybody stretch things out. You know, that made guys push things off. But now with the good calf prices and the decent weather, our runs have, have picked up now. Schnell predicts the runs will remain heavy at least until Thanksgiving. In the next month and a half, we're going to see a tremendous amount of cattle moving, not just here, all around the region. South Dakota is very dry, Montana, Wyoming, and everybody's in the same boat, having to sell more, sell earlier, and sell cows that they normally wouldn't. Schnell expects the sales to taper off after the first of the year. In Dickinson, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Schnell also said some ranchers have sent their cattle elsewhere for the winter where drought wasn't a problem. The soybean harvest is wrapping up in the region. Heavy rains meant the harvest got off to a late start for some in South Dakota. As Michelle Rook reports, despite the setbacks, farmers are pleased with this year's crop. After a challenging growing season, farmers are finding surprisingly good yields as they harvest this fall. In fact, Doug Hansen started the season planting the soybean crop late and into mud, and then the weather changed. And then, it's like from June 20th on to the rest of the summer, it just quit raining. He says the soybean crop finally got some rain in August, but he was still surprised to find such good yields. The yields are running, I would say, high 50s, low 60s. The way things look this summer, 60 bushel beans are okay. For Goodwin farmer Todd Hanton, his soybean crop was also better than he expected, especially since he had to replant some fields hit by hail. We're averaging about 55 probably right now. We've had as high as in the mid-60s, but then we've also had some in the mid-40s too. Kevin Scott farms near Sioux Falls, and while his soybean yields are below last year's records, he's still pleased. They've been running that, that 60 to 65. Uh, our best were 72 on a couple farms. Uh, I think if we average 65, we'll be, uh, it'll be very fortunate. Fortunate because that will put him above break even, which is not unlike most farmers in the state. But for a drought year, it's remarkable. With these yields and these prices, it's going to help that we should be able to break even or generate a little profit. I'm a Rook reporting for Ag Week. Corn harvest in South Dakota is lagging at 35% versus the 66% five-year average. Our latest crop stop takes us to Fergus Falls, Minnesota, where Mikkel Pates found Matt Jenin harvesting corn. Jenin, who farms with his brother and father, finished soybeans in mid-October and was more than halfway through his corn. He said both bean and corn yields won't match the records from last year, but are looking above average, which he's very thankful for, considering what others in his area are dealing with. If you don't go too far away from here, they're really fighting a lot of mud, and they're, that would not be fun, and we're pretty blessed that we don't have that right here, but you don't have to go very far away and 
it's a mess. Jenin and his brother Brett each have four young girls, and they especially enjoy tagging along in the combine this time of year. The Red River Valley Sugar Beet Harvest has just wrapped up with a record large yield in the Southern Valley. As Mikkel Pates found, on average, yields are similar to last year's records, although some beets may be left in the field. Another Whopper crop met another year of late decisions for Mindac Farmers Cooperative of Wapata, North Dakota. Well, we would have one a short day of harvest left if they released any more, otherwise we are done. Mindac shareholder Paul Chackert had about 130 acres of beets this year at his farm near Kent, Minnesota. In late October, the co-op had growers leave 10% of their beets in the field because they wouldn't be able to process them all. But shortly thereafter, the co-op lowered that to 5% and put Chackert and his son briefly back into the beets. We're okay. It just pushed back harvesting soybeans, finishing beans, and going into corn a day. Mindac members planted 95,000 acres in 2017. That's down 17% from 2016. The 2017 crop may average 33 tons per acre, topping the 31.9 ton record set in 2016. And there's still a chance the final 5% might be harvested. No one likes the idea of an on-again, off-again harvest, but it beats the idea of leaving beets in the field. For Ag Week TV, this is Michael Pates in Wapita, North Dakota. American Crystal had growers harvest all their acres. The co-op reports its average yield is just over 30 tons per acre, down slightly from last year's record of the 30.4 tons per acre. Coming up next on AgWeek TV, some important ag research is being done right in the middle of North Dakota. We'll meet the team making it happen. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Ask about our winter discounts available now. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. The team at Emerging Prairie invites you to join them at Cultivate, an emerging technology in agriculture conference on November 16th. They have crafted an afternoon that will convene ag tech leaders to explore tech innovations they've created, are currently building, or are searching for in their industry. Save the date and join us at Cultivate. Work takes you out in the cold. Stay warm in a great pair of boots from Home of Economy, where you'll find all your favorite brands like Ariat, Carhartt, Wolverine, and Rocky, plus hard-to-find waterproof insulated boots from Baffin. With more than 30 top-selling brands, Home of Economy is your work boot superstore for pull-on, lace-up, soft toe, or safety toe. All in stock at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. North Dakota's soil, crops, and climate vary greatly across the state. But Carrington, roughly in the middle of the state, is somewhat representative of North Dakota overall. Because of its central location, NDSU's Extension Research Center there is involved in a number of projects that have widespread interest, as Jonathan Knudsen found on a recent visit. For just about everyone involved in agriculture, 
Research being done here in Carrington can be useful. If they're growing really super thick inside. Kathy Wiederholt manages a fruit orchard at the Carrington Research Extension Center. It covers three acres and more than 750 plants. The goal is encouraging North Dakotans to grow more fruit. These are not fruits that are unusual in the rest of the world, but they're unusual here in the U.S. or North Dakota. We are a fruit-poor state and would love to work with anyone who wants to grow any more fruit, personal or commercial. Composting is what we call all year long. You can do it at any time. Mary Berg is Livestock Environmental Management Specialist. She helped to prepare a guide for producers to dispose of dead animals by composting. In North Dakota, the ground is frozen a lot, and with this composting, you, it's actually above ground. And so we don't have to worry about digging holes. The more you have it covered, the better chances of, of predators leaving it alone. Steve Zwinger is agronomy research specialist. Some of his work focuses on rye. The age-old crop is enjoying a 21st century resurgence. Rye is a crop that, you know, again, is gaining a lot of popularity, good quality forage that can help get our livestock through the winters and getting it off early in time to possibly plant another crop if we get more rain. So we're doing double cropping work with it. We're, doing it, we're grazing it at our livestock unit in that corn-soybean rotation that has a good fit as a cover crop. It just seems to have a lot of uses and a lot of fits for agriculture right now. Whether it's for crops or livestock, scientists here are coming up with new and better ways of doing things. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. North Dakota's first pasta plant has had some ups and downs, but it's back up and running and heading toward profitability. The Noodles by Leonardo plant at Candu closed in 2011 after the death of founder Leonard Gaspari. But as Mikkel Pates reports, it opened a couple years later under new owners. The pasta plant was built in Candu in the 80s, originally called Noodles by Leonardo. Candu farmer and businessman Jim Gibbons and his family bought the plant in 2013 and partnered with Beckram Foods of New York. The Gibbons farm provides about half the wheat for the plant. He says the local processing adds about 25 cents a bushel to the value of his grain. We're trying to add value to our wheat crops by taking them into the uh, pasta plant, milling them into flour, and then pressing the flour into pasta and taking the pasta and adding it into these retail boxes. Durham wheat makes the best pasta, but the famed Durham Triangle of North Central North Dakota shriveled after disease took hold in the 1990s. Gibbon says the industry's learned to better make pasta from a blend of Durham and hard red spring wheat. We grow a lot of hard red spring wheat here, and we use a lot of hard red spring wheat blends in with the Durham. If you want the fanciest and the nicest pasta, you can't beat Durham. But if you want to uh, make pasta to put in soups or schools and stuff, most of it is, is a Durham blend. Right now we're probably grinding, oh, about 70% spring wheat and 30% Durham. The plant produces about 1.5 million pounds of pasta a month. Among their most popular items are spaghetti, elbow noodles, rotini, penne, and shells. About 60 people work at the plant, and that's about half of what they need to run at capacity. The busiest time we ever had, we had six lines going, six or seven lines going at one time, um, and now we're down to the, the four, so there's a lot more capacity than what we have for sure. Haugen is enthusiastic about increasing the plant's capacity and says it's a good place to work. In Candu, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. The Candu plant also ships some of its pasta to a packaging plant in Colgate, North Dakota. Bectrum sells the pasta through 38,000 stores in the U.S. and exports to 18 countries. The weather seems to be transitioning to winter. Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll visit one stop on the Montana Craft Brewery Trail. BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. 
Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. The future of ceramic nozzle technology is here today with the Total Ag Air Induction Turbo Nozzle. The only ceramic triple spray nozzle on the market. Works with all sprayers for better weed control and wheel tracks. They could be the last spray nozzles you'll ever need. I'm really impressed with them. It just amazes me how they work so well. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. Weather portion of Ag Week now. Has winter come early to the Northern Plains? We certainly have run into a spell of colder weather uh, this weekend, and it's going to get much colder as we go through the week. At least some pretty chilly nights coming our way. We've had a few little snows, some areas more than others. Some of it's mostly melted. We don't have that wide expanse of, of heavy snow cover yet, but there certainly is some snow on the ground here and there, and it has kind of a wintry feel, the atmosphere does. Question is... Are we going to see the ground again? Is this it? Well, we certainly have the weather pattern right now that has brought cold air to drop down into the northern plains. It's dropped pretty far south, uh, and it will stick around for a while. But notice the northern polar jet stream and the southern branch, weaker branch of the jet, both right now have kind of a southwest to northeast direction out of them. That's significant. And keep in mind that down south it's still quite warm. Temperatures, in fact, this weekend have been very warm down in Texas with some record heat possible. So at any point in time, all we need is a switch in the winds and it would be very easy to get that warm air to come northward again. After all, the snow is not widespread, so that's not any barrier. There are no mountain ranges between here and the warm air, and the jet stream has not really gone that far south just yet. So my suspicion is we may have a cool uh, November overall relative to average, but I don't really think now is the start of winter. Now, that being said, we certainly have a cold weather pattern, and colder weather has dropped into the northern plains for the time being anyway. However, as the week goes along, it'll sort of moderate from time to time. I do expect more cold weather to drop southward, and parts of the way south will continue to have some very warm temperatures. And by this weekend, we'll be back to some very cold weather again here across the north before that shifts on to the eastern part of the country. Precipitation, some scattered snows at the end of the weekend, but that should be moving into rain as it moves to the eastern seaboard. For the most part, this week looks fairly quiet. There may be some little shots of snow, flurries mostly, and a few areas of very light scattered rains, but nothing too major. Toward the end of the week and the weekend, there will probably be a push into the Pacific Northwest, and that rain system could yield the second week, November 12th through the 18th, a few snows coming out into the Great Plains, and perhaps one of those will lay down more substantial snow cover, but still the jet stream appears to be in a meandering mood. So what my suspicion is this second week of November will yield some warm temperatures as well as some cold. So I'm not really convinced yet that winter has made that big jump to solid winter state. I think we're having a cold snap. We've had a few snows and we'll likely see some more, but in between there will likely be some melting. And although it feels very wintry out there right now, uh, we're not going to have a lot of heat in November and we're certainly segueing in, but I'm not really sure to call this the start of winter just yet. 
Micro Essentials is a unique product. What makes it different than other products, it has four different nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. So it's a huge benefit for the grower. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you that the indoor auction at the Alaris Center will take place on November 27th. We're still adding items to the auction. If you have items to add to our list, contact our office at 701-757-4015. We still have room for your quality consignments. We always have a big auction. We always have a great crowd. All we need is some more equipment from you. Contact us, 701-757-4015, or find us at resourceauction.com. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have it. a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, more people can eat. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Montana is a big barley producing state and a growing number of craft breweries are putting it to use in beer. The Beaver Creek Brewery at Weibo is one of the first you'll find as you travel from North Dakota into Montana. As Jonathan Knudsen reports, it's on the state's brewery trail. Montana farmers are raising more barley and more beer is being made in Montana. We're visiting with one of the breweries. We're on the interstate. People can get off the interstate, come in here. Um, we're either the first or the last, it seems like, for people that are out of state. The Weebo Brewery is one of about 60 on the Montana Brewery Trail. Montana, North Dakota, and Idaho dominate U.S. barley production. The whole Made in Montana thing is, is big for Montanans. They love to see that sticker. We can't put the sticker on the beer. Um, not all of it comes from Montana, but we try to get as much as we can. So we get farmers and ranchers in here all the time that ask us that question. We say we try to get as much as we can from Montana so we can call it a Montana-made product. Montana is behind only Vermont in the number of craft breweries per capita, and Montana farmers appreciate that growth. Those farmers and ranchers, we have that connection with them because they do their job and you know, they probably don't know where all their stuff is going, but probably some of it comes here. So we have that special connection with those guys. Barley farmers like to say, you can't make beer without barley. That's certainly true here in Montana. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Beaver Creek typically brews up to four times a week. Besides being open to the public, its products are sold at a number of locations in Montana and North Dakota. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, area agri women gather to share their harvest of knowledge. The team at Emerging Prairie invites you to join them at Cultivate, an emerging technology in agriculture conference on November 16th. They have crafted an afternoon that will convene ag tech leaders to explore tech innovations they've created, are currently building, or are searching for in their industry. Save the date and join us at Cultivate.
Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. 50 years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. American AgriWomen is the nation's largest coalition of farm, ranch, and agribusiness women. It consists of more than 40,000 members. The Minnesota and North Dakota AgriWomen groups met at the 35th annual Harvest of Knowledge in Grand Forks. Leaders say you don't have to be a farmer to join. Anyone with a heart for agriculture can become a member. They spend their time promoting ag and they're active in consumer and student education. It is surprising going into classrooms um, that are rural areas even. It's great questions that they have. They're really curious and they want to know more about it. But it is surprising what we assume they know and it makes you feel like you are making a difference being there. The American AgriWomen National Convention will be in Bloomington, Minnesota, November 15th through the 19th. You don't have to be a member or a farmer to attend. This week's Photo of the Week comes from Jim Thompson of Page, North Dakota. Just a magnificent panorama as the sun sets during corn harvest. Thanks, Jim. If you want to see your ag photos on Ag Week TV, email it, along with a description, to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.